Light shines in the darkness. And the darkness, the darkness has not, not overcome it. And the noise resounds in the silence, right? <laughs> we're, we're still learning our new sound system that all of you have made possible for us as a way for us to be able to share the good news of Jesus and a life in the body of Christ together with the people of faith. And thank you, Rosemary, for being an awesome student who can teach others. Rosemary's making the adjustments. I'm doing the pastoral stall, if you couldn't tell, yeah. So, yeah. All right, wonderful. Is that good? Is that good, everybody? Better? Okay, fantastic. Praise the Lord. So glad you're here this season of Epiphany. Remember, after Christmas, as we celebrate the presence of the Lord in the season of Epiphany, we learn from the Lord uh, through his word who God is and what God's about and being made in God's image. As Jesus says, come, follow me, and I will teach you. We learn about ourselves, who we are made in the image of God and what the Lord would have us to be about also. And, and uh, we can certainly boil it down to this, that the Lord uh, would have us know and grow in the confidence of his steadfast love for us and teaching us how to live as people who are loved with an everlasting love. And today we'll hear more from the Lord through his word about this blessed life together so that we might continue uh, to grow in Christ even as Lent approaches a month or so from now. And we will grow in our trust in the Lord even unto death on our own cross in the strength of Christ and lead of Holy Spirit. So a uh, few quick announcements for today, uh, some duplicating what's in the insert, but just to make sure everyone hears, this coming Friday, we have our monthly First Friday Prayer Summit. We're into, uh, well, uh, this will be actually our, our 50th First Friday Prayer Summit. So, so pray that you can join us on the phone. Um, I, I I uh, know it's always a blessing for those who can be with us in whatever way you, you might be. And Rosemary, that's a, that's a little bit louder, at least to me. So there we go. Um, and th this coming Thursday, we, we begin our new Disciple Bible Study, uh, a weekly class this Thursday at 2. And we are excited for those who are already committed to participating and certainly invite you to join us in that, that uh, very solid Bible study where the first year we learn an overview of the Holy Bible and are very blessed then in the years to follow if you should continue to see some of the very themes within um, God's Word. So the other quick announcement that, that we would share is that today, right after this worship service in the Luther Room foyer, uh, this being the last Sunday of the month, we invite you to share in um, an extended time of prayer. And we're very grateful for uh, the prayer teams that are available uh, to serve one another and to serve all who would come, as we certainly know um, by God's grace again and again that God is true to his word, that when we ask one another to pray uh, for one another in Jesus' name, then the Lord shows up and shows off in, in a wonderful way. Of course, we are grateful that Larry Lloyd Cano and others every Sunday make themselves available. I'm um, here in the front right after worship, but this once a month uh, time uh, for prayer is extended time and again in the Luther Room foyer uh, right after this worship service. Please come, whether it's a prayer need for yourself or for someone else that you would like to, to lift up before the Lord. So glad you're here. In Jesus' name, welcome. Let's share together our memory verse for the month of January that's set before us from Proverbs 15. A gentle answer turns away wrath. But a harsh word stirs up anger. Proverbs 15, 1. 
you may remain seated, but if you do remain seated, please make note if there's someone behind you who would like to kneel so that if you're seated and have someone behind you, if you could lean forward so they have the option to kneel if they desire. Let us come before the Lord kneeling or sitting, but our hearts humbled before the living God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Friends, we're blessed that God tells us plainly as recorded in his word in Holy Scripture, specifically in 1 John, the Lord tells us that if we say we have no sin, we're only deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us quietly examine our hearts and our lives before the Lord. Let us now confess our sin to God our Father together. Most, Most merciful God, God we, we confess that we are by nature, nature sinful and unclean. We have, we have sinned, sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what, what we have left undone. We have, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your way to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Good news. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. So as the called and ordained servant of the Church of Christ, and by his authority in this public assembly, the same authority that we all bear as we scatter into the world to announce this good news to any who are truly sorry for their sin, what I now announce to you, that through your faith in the person and work of God's only begotten Son, our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven, abundant life is restored, and assurance of everlasting life prepared in Father God's house by our Savior Jesus Christ, and a place at the never-ending feast is yours in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please rise and let us sing together.
Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, living God, we pray that you would increase in us your gifts of faith, hope, and love, and that in your wondrous grace, you would work in our lives to work in us a, a love for what you command, that we may obtain all that you would promise us, as by your grace we are. We walk in faith, and we anticipate the place that's prepared for us in your house and at your table, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Indeed, Miss Patsy, I'm not sure we have any of our youngest ones here, but I know that Zach and Lizzie are already hopping up to be good, <laughs> good sports as children of God. They and, are. <laughs> and I, I, like, I like being up here next well, to you too, so well, it's wonderful. Thank you all for coming up. I appreciate it. I remember when you all were just little ones, okay? Um, whoops. Have you ever seen a, um, a sign like this in somebody's house? You might, there's no place like home, okay. Some people say, you know, home sweet home, there's no place like home sweet home Alabama, okay. Well, if you've ever seen a picture like this, you know, somebody's trying to let you know that their house is welcoming and come on in, you know, we, we want you to feel comfortable and we'll feed you and this is a place you know you can go. Now, this kind of, this little saying was actually uh, a man named uh, John Howard Payne wrote a song. It was called Home Sweet Home, and this is the last verse or the last part of that. It was home, home, sweet, sweet home. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. And you know, for us older folks, we remember Judy Garland, no place like home, Wizard of Oz, right? <laughs> click, click, click. So, um, but um, today in our Bible story, um, Jesus goes, you know, remember last week he was at the synagogue and he read the prophecy and he said, this has been fulfilled. Well, he's still in Nazareth, okay? And he's proclaiming God's word. And, um, but the people of Nazareth are going, wait a minute here. This, this, is, this is Joseph's son, the carpenter, you know, what, what is he doing here, you know, and they, they, they just rejected him, okay, and um, matter of fact, this is what Jesus said, um, he said, um, let me find that so I can read it to you just as it is in the Bible, okay, Jesus heard the people grumbling, and he told them, he said, no doubt you will quote this prophet to me, Physician, heal yourself, and you will tell me, do here in, the home, in your hometown um, what we have heard you've done in other places. They had been in Capernaum, and he had been healing, you know, we want water turned to wine in Canaan, and the, at Cana, and he said, he said to them, he said this, he said, um, but I tell you the truth, no prophet is accepted in his own hometown. Well, with him saying this, and the people got mad, and they mobbed him, and they ran him out of town, and they were planning on throwing him over a cliff, okay? A cliff. And Jesus walked through miraculous, miraculously through the crowd and left. He was going to go on to serve others. He had ministries other places, and if these people were not going to be accepting of his ministry or the truth that he was telling them about the ministry of, of that, we've, that he had come to serve, then he was going to move on. So um, I doubt that day that Jesus was thinking Nazareth was, um, there's no place like home. Do you think so? I don't think so. He was moving on. And um, so I thought our prayer today would be that, um, 
our hearts would be welcoming to Jesus, okay? And be welcoming to take him into our hearts and be, let, let his, our heart be his home. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that we can come and worship here today. And Lord, we just ask that you would make us willing and just fill us with your Holy Spirit to make our heart your home, to let us welcome you and welcome your word and spread that word to others. And we pray these things in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. Amen. And as Thank you all for coming. We out. return to our seats. We all need to hear Paul's words to Timothy long ago. <laughs> Trust and follow Jesus. Jesus. He gives you power, love, and self-control. And we are blessed as the Lord speaks to us through our sister Judy with God's word in song. Need to speak to our hearts through the hearing of your word in Holy Scripture. The first lesson is from Jeremiah chapter 1, beginning with the fourth verse. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I have appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Alas, Lord God, Behold, I do not know how to speak because I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am a youth, because everywhere I send you, you shall go, and all that I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord stretched out his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have appointed you this day over the nations and over the kingdoms to pluck up and to break down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
sing together. According to St. Luke, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. And he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And all were speaking well of him and wondering at the gracious words which were falling from his lips. And they were saying, is this not Joseph's son? And he said to them, No doubt you will quote this proverb to me. Physician, heal yourself. Whatever we heard was done at Capernaum, do here in your hometown as well. And he said, Truly I say to you, no prophet is welcome in his hometown. But I say to you in truth, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah when the sky was shut up for three years and six months when a great famine came over all the land and yet Elijah was sent to none of them but only to Zarephath in the land of Sidon to a woman who was a widow. And there were many lepers in Israel in the time of Elisha the prophet. And none of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. And all the people in the synagogue were filled with rage as they heard these things. And they got up and drove him out of the city and led him to the brow of the hill on which their city had been built in order to throw him down the cliff. But passing through their midst, he went his way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Let us pray together. Almighty and ever living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, living God, we praise you, for you alone are the source and giver of life abundant and everlasting, and there is no other. We thank you for revealing yourself so plainly to us through your word and by your spirit. Lord, may you work in us even now so that the words that you have spoken to us through prophets, apostles, and through the incarnation of your Son, our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, May your words be our words, so that the words of my mouth and the inspiration of our hearts will be pleasing in your sight, even as we go forth in a little while, so that our words from our mouths and our actions would be instruments of your drawing all people ever closer to yourself for abundant life now and place in your house and at your table forevermore. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. So how many here today have ever experienced a challenging time in your life? Anyone? Yeah, of course. Chuckles, to be sure, because as we always celebrate, 
the, the Lord does not speak to us a word that is irrelevant and disconnected from our lives of faith for which God made us to be in relationship with him. But the Lord always speaks to us in a way that is helpful for us in our life and journey of faith. Indeed, we really don't need to launch through some sort of list of possibilities for how we can experience challenges in life, do we? I mean, <clears throat> our own health, our relationships, our resources, do we have enough? Our <clears throat> friendships, our jobs, our, our nation, things going on with children and what they are or are not into and is it or is it not helpful? There's so, so, so many ways in which we can be challenged. And, and oftentimes when we are, it can kind of be like us sitting in a space and watching TV and someone comes in to observe and they look at us and they think, well, uh, they're comfortable. They're there sitting, watching, and presumably enjoying TV. And yet, even though outwardly we may look just fine and comfortable in, in every way, inwardly we might be very, very miserable. Things going on on our hearts and in our minds, things that are are churning. When challenging seasons come along in, in our lives, they often leave us to feel as if that weight is upon us alone and nobody understands. Nobody else knows what it feels like. Indeed, we, <clears throat> of course, are not unique as a congregation, but there are many challenges in the life of our church family at this time. Not the least of which would be that today at four o'clock, uh, Nisha Paleo is going to have to make a decision about whether or not to leave her husband, Ricky Sr., on life support. And the decision looks very plain and clear that it's Ricky's time and the Lord is calling him home. We also know, maybe you don't, but Joy Deering uh, fell uh, not too many days ago. I talked to her last night, and she is in excruciating back pain where all she wants to do is, is to stay in bed and pull the covers up over her head and be left alone. But as with so many others, I trust that you might send her a little card or a little note. And again, she's, of course, not the only one. We have folks here today. My brother George Webby, his, his <clears throat> uh, brother-in-law, John Green, Sherry Gilbert's brother, John, uh, died just a few days ago, and we had his funeral. Just yesterday, Caden and I drove up to visit with Rick Blevins in the death of his father earlier this week. Um, even here today, we're grateful. Kathy Troja is here with her parents and her father, Herman, right next to her. And, and it's very plain to see that Herman has had a number of surgeries on the right side of his head with his ear and all sorts of challenges that are there, and yet Herman, what an inspiration that on your way in, you said, I told them I was coming to church. Praise the Lord. What a, what a wonderful inspiration to me and to all of us. Challenging times. We hear about them in today's scriptures. Jeremiah is challenged by God to not settle into his self-understanding, Jeremiah's self-understanding that he was too young to be 
an instrument, a rather large and important instrument of God's work to build up and to tear down, to pluck and to plant. God challenged Jeremiah to trust the Lord in what God had set in front of him. In today's gospel reading, the people are challenged to see that this, this boy that they knew growing up would indeed be one who has grown into what he has grown into. You know, it's, it's kind of like if you remember when Lizzie was little and now she's grown up and we might look at her and say, you became what? And yet, every day she's grown into the wonderful young lady that God made her to be, including we celebrate with you your first place prize in your horse riding. Is that the right way to say it? A horse show competition? I, you know, I'm not very horsey. But the, the bottom line is, Lizzie, we're very proud of you and the way you're growing into the gifts and skills that God has given you. And congratulations on your victory, to be sure. But the people were, were challenged to see this one that they knew as a little boy. He is growing to be the man who would bear the weight of the sin of the world on the cross. And, and <clears throat> Jesus makes plain to them that it is very important for them to hear God's challenge to know that the love of the Lord is not just for the people of Israel, but it's for all people. There are all sorts of widows and lepers in Israel, but Jesus tells them that Elijah ministered to somebody, a widow who wasn't an Israelite. Elisha ministered to a leper who wasn't an Israelite. They were challenged. They were challenged to see the truth of the gospel, the good news of, of God in Jesus Christ, delivering us from the power of sin and death through his person and his saving work and delivering us for abundant life in and with the Lord now and forever as God made us to, to begin with. You, you see, God often challenges us. We, 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 we oftentimes think that well, I become a Christian, and so therefore, things should get easier for me. Things should get easier for my loved ones. And we, and we run to passages, as in the Gospel of Matthew, where it, it's true. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. But we often forget. As is so easy for us to do. Which is why God calls us to study his word. Somehow or another. Please people of God. Become more of a student of God's word than what you are. That's what disciples do. Learners, students, that's what a disciple is. We, we grow in our eagerness and willingness to study God's word because in the example of come to me all you who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We forget or did we know that the context in which Jesus speaks those words is in comparison to the yoke of the religious leaders who were putting things on the people that were impossible for they themselves to fulfill, especially when they were told to do it in your own strength and never reminded that whatever challenge comes our way, God promises to be our help and our strength, our counsel, our lead. And our guide. Everything becomes hard when you're told, Dave, you've got to do it. Sean, you've got to do it. 
As if somehow you're supposed to look at me and go, well, he's asking me to do it, so he must do it, and I must not be as good as him. No. To be followers of Jesus is, is to remind one another that whatever God asks us to do, he gives us himself, his word, and his spirit, by which we have strength and guidance to be able to fulfill whatever God would ask of, of us even when it's a challenge. God challenges us. We hear, do we not, Jesus in the Beatitudes saying, blessed are those who mourn. Um, that doesn't sound very comforting. And yet he's calling us to Trust that God enters our mourning and for us in the strength of the Lord to enter the mourning, the bearing of grief of others. Blessed are the persecuted. That doesn't sound very comfortable. It, 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 is, a, it is a challenge to believe that wherever persecution would come our way for the word of the Lord being believed, proclaimed, shared this is going to be a difficult path does not Jesus say unless you say no to yourself that's what he means when he says unless you deny yourself unless you say no to yourself unless you deny yourself and take up your cross which is to say yes to God unless you say no to yourself and yes to God and come follow me stick close to me then it'll be pretty hard for you to learn from me to be my disciples as to how I provide. A, a yoke that's not just as light as a feather, a, a cross that is, well, what it, yikes, a cross. Wow. Does not Jesus in the parable say things that move the religious leaders to go, mm. He's talking about us. About 120 years ago or so, there was a guy who coined the phrase, obviously inspired by Holy Spirit. You ever heard it before? Jesus came to comfort the afflicted and to afflict the comfortable. The way of Christ is not comfortable. Could I offer that the Lord is very wise and loving in challenging us, in working through challenges that are permitted to come our way? Because maybe God didn't author them, but He could shut them down anytime. So He obviously permits things to come our way even if he's not the source like with Joseph in Genesis saying to his brothers you intended this for evil but God intended it for good does does the Lord not always have good intentions he who gave us his best his only son and his only son giving us his all Jesus Jesus did not die of suffocation on the cross. He, he bled to death. He poured out his whole life blood so that you and I could have, well, a blood transplant, a transfusion, you know, totally drain us of our marrow that makes the blood and give us a whole new lifeblood. Jesus poured out his life so that we might be redeemed from death. Jesus... The Word of God might be helping you to unlearn something. You, you, you know, we live in a day and age where people hear things that doesn't agree with them or set well with them or they don't understand and they're like, I've got lots of other options of where to go to church. I'm not going to sit here and listen to this. But it could be that God is saying, you know, you need to unlearn something that you think you know is right because what you think you know is a path of destruction 
path of destruction. God challenges us. Because sometimes we need to unlearn the ways of the world. Sometimes God's trying to raise us up so we have a, a better view of things. You know, like, see, this child is becoming something wonderful. Are you noticing it? Or raise us up so that we see the good news of God's unfailing love for us in Jesus Christ isn't just for me and my people and people that look and sound like me. It's for people that are very different from me, you know? Like Gentiles to Jews. Maybe, maybe God is challenging you because something in your life needs to be uncovered, exposed. Maybe it's a good idea to confess it of your own volition before you're found out. Hey? Confession is good for the soul. To discover the pity and mercy and grace of the living God. Maybe, maybe God is trying to invite you to experience a joy that you have never tasted before. You'll never know as long as you keep saying, well, that's a challenge that you're setting in front of other people to say the name of Jesus to other people. I mean, Lord, you know my heart. Yeah, he does, but they don't. And they may not know that the name of Jesus means that God saves. Are you being invited, challenged? to an effectiveness, to, to a ministry that you're shutting down by turning your deaf ear of your heart to the Lord? You know, it is interesting. It was pointed out to me this past week that, you know, if I take this ear, put it like this, and I take this ear and, you know, put it like that, it makes a heart. <laughs> Isn't that pretty cool? I never thought about that before. I bet there's a bunch of us that never thought about that before. One ear and two ears makes a heart. When we use our ears and listen to the counsel of the Lord, we see some, some challenging to unlearning, to being lifted up and seeing things differently, to, to being uncovered and exposed and invited to greater joy than what we've ever known to this point. I, I, I would offer to you that the Lord gives us some very tangible counsel in his word and preparation what the Lord led me to um, in a one, two, three fashion, very, very briefly in closing, in the book of James. Talk about challenge. James 1, 2, 3, and 4. <laughs> I mean, that's easy enough to remember, isn't it? James chapter 1, beginning at verse 2, along with verses 3 and 4. James 1, 2, 3, 4. And there you can... Learn how to face a challenge in the strength and lead of the Lord. God's word says through James, the bondservant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. To all the people of God, to the 12 tribes who are dispersed throughout the world. Greetings. Consider it all joy, brothers and sisters, when you encounter various trials, challenges. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Another translation says perseverance, and we'll get to that in a second. And let endurance, let perseverance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. See, I would offer to you that the, the one, two, three of the one, two, three, four that's given here is this. There's, there's a command it says, consider it pure joy when challenges come your way. How do, you, how do you do that? Well, God tells us. It, it, obedience to the command, might, might I, I offer it, it, it looks, like, looks like this. Um, it means thank the Lord for this opportunity to grow. It means refuse to give up. 
Because God doesn't give up on us, so why should we give up on what he's permitted? It, it, it means... It means that, that God would have us, it means that God would have us believe that the God who gave us his best and his all is not only going to be with us through this valley, but he is, is going to strengthen us through this and help us to see all the more plainly and clearly. Consider it joy. Here's an opportunity, a challenge from the Lord to grow. Because there's a reason. Right here, there's, there's, there's a reason for it. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, uh, perseverance. The, the, the word here that is translated endurance, perseverance, is, is hupomone. And I would offer to you very simply that what it means is beyond one. It means that, that God, God permits things to come our way so that when we say, Lord, I can't make it through this. So, so, so Lynn, when you said, Lord, I can't make it through this, and you do, well, what are we to conclude? You obviously knew you couldn't make it through. So somebody must have helped you. Hupomone, more than yourself. There wasn't just you alone facing that time when you said, I can't do this. God, whether you heard him or not, was saying, that's right, you can't. But I can. Because I want to show you not only that I will be your strength and bring you through, but the final piece. And let endurance have its perfect results so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. You see, God's saying that he works through challenges to build up your faith. So that having brought you through the challenge, moving forward you will say... I know the Lord has given me enough faith to endure anything. Because if I can get through that, there's nothing in front of me that I can't endure. When he brings you through, he will show you that, that you will always have enough hope. You will not lack in hope. Because God who said, I will bring you through, and he does, you will know that biblical hope. God says it and it's true. I can take it to the bank. Then I will know for certain with whatever's in front of me that God will come through. I will have enough love even when I'm irritated to the bone. God will give me the strength to love. So that whatever's in front of me I know I will have enough faith, hope, love, not to mention Fruit of the Spirit in the midst of it all. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. Through any challenge, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. The Lord will see to it that you know because hupo mone, you're not in this by yourself. You will have everything that you need in whatever's in front of you, upon you, or behind you. Behind you, upon you, in front of you. The Lord blesses us with challenges that we might grow in him and encourage others to trust the same. May God be praised. Amen. Let us rise and sing together.
confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for our prayers, or if you desire, you may kneel. And as we noted last week, and there are a number of you who came forward. Um, this, this is not a reserved place uh, for the prayers. And if you want to come and, and approach the throne of grace all the more closely, uh, then just know that these kneelers are just as available to everyone as the ones that may or may not be connected to your pews. So uh, let us come before the Lord with all confidence in Jesus Christ. Lord, you told Jeremiah that you knew him before you formed him in the womb. Indeed, you also consecrated him there to be a prophet. Help us to teach our children and grandchildren to seek your plans for their lives. Remind them that you will provide whatever words they will need to speak clearly for you. Help them to move past whatever problem people they will confront. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, you are our strength, our refuge in time of trouble. You are our hope, our confidence when we don't know where to turn next. Deliver us from sinful ways, whether ours or the unbelieving world around us. Set us free to hear your word and sustain us so that we grow in faith 
just as we grow in years. We praise you, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, Hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, help us to understand what it means to love others in the same way that you showed your love for us by dying on, for us on the cross. <clears throat> your love is a love that teaches us to serve others within the with an attitude of joy, even when <clears throat> others do not respond in the same way. We keep sinning and you keep forgiving us and loving us. Your love never ends. As we have, as we <clears throat> have grown from children to adults, we see your love more closely. Change us to reflect your love in our lives. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, comfort with your love all who are lonely, fearful, or brokenhearted. Sustain all who are suffering in body or soul, especially. On this day, O oh Lord, we thank you for our brother Herman Troha's presence and witness along with his whole family, thanking you for their testimony that in you, O oh Lord, in your word, and any opportunity available to gather with your believing people, we find encouragement for the journey and confidence and strength in you. Continue also to be with Bob Cooper who suffered a stroke and needs much prayer in his rehab at Encompass in Pelham. We pray, O oh Lord, for our brother Ricky Paleo as he is very near the gate of death thanking you for his and his family's testimony that in Christ is comfort and hope in the face of our sorrows and grief. We thank you, O Lord, for being with Earl Waller as he heals from his surgery this past Monday and for being with Jan Kamlick with her consultation in a couple days for her pancreatic cancer and for so many who are on our hearts and our prayer lists near and far. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, the story of your preaching in Nazareth challenges us to advance our faith from knowing you as a gracious speaker to learning the Old Testament stories with a richness that prepares us to teach others. Open our hearts to read all the activities of the prophets Elijah and Elisha and understand the messages and miracles that they brought to your people Israel. Keep our eyes on how these stories all point to you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. It is indeed into your hands, O oh Lord, that we commend the many on our hearts, these for whom we pray your church in this and every place. We commend to you our own lives, our nation, the nations of the world, our president, our peacekeeping forces here and deployed abroad, and those who have no one to pray for them by name, but to whom you send us to meet new brothers and sisters in the human family that we might discover them as brothers and sisters in Christ or invite them to be new friends in Christ, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Please share Christ's peace with one another. Heads on the swivel, hands a-waving. What a joy and a privilege it is to be together. As you're doing that, Rosemary, it's not in the bulletin, but can we sing Let the Vineyards um, right after the minute for mission? Would that be okay? And all of you, I think you... You know the words, most of you know the words for all these years. Like I said, it's not in the bulletin, but uh, right after I share the minute for mission briefly here, uh, we will rise and sing, uh, let the vineyards be fruitful, Lord. Um, <clears throat> our minute for mission is, is very simply that I, I know that this is just January and Lent does not begin until March the 2nd, but... Um, we need this, this month of preparation. February is almost here, and it's a short month, and, and we need Lenten pre-readers for 
those who will pray about being a speaker during Lent, one of the, the wonderful blessings is to have um, short speakers on Sundays during Lent and longer speakers on Wednesdays. Uh, we, we need you. If it's not you, who? We, we need people who are willing to pre-read our book on hospitality. The gospel comes with a house key is the name of it. And <clears throat> we also need people who will help us to write a devotional book. They don't have to be mile-long devotions. They can be a sentence or a paragraph or however the Spirit would lead you. And <clears throat> you can pick a Bible verse from the Lenten Scriptures or uh, we can <clears throat> uh, commend to you, here you do this one if you want us to choose for you so you don't have to go through them. But um, we need to prepare now. And we're prepared to begin preparing now but we need you to help us pick it up from here so we can be ready for Lent with speakers and devotion writers. Please let Wendy know, Pat know, or myself, or call the church office, and uh, we will get you equipped to help us together be an equipping ministry for the congregation in the season of Lent that's before us beginning in March. Let's rise and sing together. Let the vineyards be fruitful, Lord. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Indeed, we remember that on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our oh, Father, Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated as we gather around the Lord's table. Let us be blessed in remembering and knowing and thanking the Lord for his presence, hosting this table, giving us his blessings, benefits, forgiveness, abundant life, and assurance anew of everlasting.
Now may this, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of those whom you have fed with one heavenly food through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's rise and sing together our song to take to the world.
join us for prayer for yourself or someone else in the foyer of the Luther room where there are teams awaiting serving you with prayer even as if you would like to immediately uh, speak to Larry Lloyd Cano and pray with him or certainly there's brothers and sisters right next to you who'd be willing to pray too in the strength of Christ and lead of Holy Spirit let's go in peace and serve the Lord thanks, thanks be to God, God. amen